We want to talk about the new NXT. I know we've kind of beat around the bush about it. The new NXT 2.0 started last night. Um, and it obviously, it looked very different to what NXT has looked like in the past and what we've expected. Um, I mean, I've, I've not watched it yet, so it's hard for me to comment too much on it. I love the way it looks aesthetically. Um, I'm very much excited to watch the wedding fin. But what did you make of the overall vibe of the show? We know that, you know, we've talked about the last few weeks that they're moving away from this being like a kind of indie show that's competing with AEW on a Wednesday night and they're moving this to more of a Vince and Bruce show where they oversee the, the big picture and this is to try and find people that they are going to want to use on Raw and SmackDown years to come. How did they do in the first night from what you've seen? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I think it retained a lot of the old elements of NXT. Uh, I was really pleased to see the old announced team there. Well, actually, it's still a fairly new announced team, aren't they? Of, uh, yeah. Weird Barrett. Joseph and Beth Phoenix. I mean, I think I think that's a, one of the best combinations in pro wrestling. They did seem slightly toned down a little bit. It's as if they were there and thinking, mm, some important people are listening. We better watch what we say. <laughs> so they were slightly toned down a bit, but there were some actually really good lines there. Like, for instance, the opening match was between Bron Breaker. That's with two T's for some reason. <laughs> two T's. Versus, versus LA Knight. LA Knight was backstage doing one of his promos and then Bron Breaker introduced himself to Knight and issued an impromptu challenge for a match. Uh, Knight accepted it. Unwise Kenny, since he had a you know, match later on the show for the vacant NXT title, uh, went in there with, with, uh, with Breaker. And um, Bron's obviously the son of Rick Steiner. Looks like Rick Steiner throws a Steiner line exactly like <laughs> Rick Steiner, right? Anyway, they didn't acknowledge on the air that he was the son of Rick Steiner, but there actually was a really funny line there from Vic Joseph. And um, as uh, Breaker was beaten down night, uh, Joseph said, this is a dog face gremlin mentality by Breaker. <laughs> oh, that was a great line. That was I did see I did see on uh, Twitter that during the the match that he must have been having that Braun was having that uh, Drew McIntyre put a tweet out basically saying that he's got like more than a thirty three and a third percent chance of success. So it's nice to see the Steiner name is living on even with his uncle Scott. Good, very good. Well, I mean, he did really well. I mean, you could see and hear, unfortunately, Knight calling the match. Um, so, uh, but I mean, this, this was, you know, big night for Braun and uh, I thought he sold really well. Uh, I thought his offense overall was, was very well done. Uh, his finisher is a press slam into a power slam, which looks tremendous. Uh, he got, you know, obviously early and I was helping him, but Knight's a big guy and uh, he looked really good on Knight. And, um, you know, the guy looks mean, he projects menace. And let's face it, Kenny, we know there's quite a lot of wrestlers in the business right now, not mentioning any names. You know, one particular brother tag team, you don't project <laughs> in the manner. But I mean, Bron Breaker, I mean, I'm, I was scared watching him, Kenny. <laughs> I mean, so, I, I am more terrified of the Young Bucks when they come out for a wrestling match than Bron Breaker, but in a different way, potentially. Um, but no, I mean, Bron, I've not I've not seen it, but I, I like the look. I secretly like the Bron Breaker name, and I know that's like an unpopular thing to say because everyone wants him just to be called Steiner. But, um, you yeah. know, there's time for that. I mean, I, I remember years ago, this is a bad comparison, I hope that Bron Breaker has a much better career and we feel better about him than the person I'm about to bring up. But when Dolph Ziggler came around, I remember yeah. reading it at PowerSlam being like, I, Dolph Ziggler? We're never going to call him that, but now it's imprinted in our brain that he is Dolph Ziggler. Oh, That's yeah. what it is. So I, th I don't think the name's going to matter too much. Um, but he, I love the singlet. I love the way that he looks. He looks like a big, a big beefy man. And sometimes you need that in your wrestling. You need a big beefy man. And um, I'm, I, the fact that he hit a Steiner line exactly the way that we used to see them fills me with a lot of hope. Then that we're going to get him. Um, I mean, I would love if once maybe in a house show or something. Well, not a house show on TV, so we could see it. Play that old WCW Steiner's theme. You know, the Steiner line right. theme. I mean, that yeah, would just yeah. be... Or maybe one day we get an appearance from Rick and Scott and we have well, a six-man tag. Wasn't the song called Steinerized? Steinerized, yeah. Sorry, not Steiner line. Steiner, Steinerized. Yeah, it was good. It's it from was... that awful Slam Jam album. Well, you say awful, Finn. 
It was, it was an un. It's a classic that people just uh, are so underrated. But anyway, I could talk about WC. I remember when we did the tour with Sting, and at the end of the show, we played his W is a uh, man called Sting theme, and yeah. you could see him just kind of looking at the crowd, being like, "Oh God, this song again." You know, bringing it back into my memory. When he became a crow, it was the happiest thing he ever did. You go back and listen to Sting's theme, like in 1990, it was a tr really good entrance theme. And like, then they gave him the man called Sting. <laughs> I mean, our hearts sank as WCW fans back in the day, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> really um, but anyway, let's go back to Braun Breaker. Do you think Braun Breaker, do you think Braun, blah, blah, Braun Breaker, do you think that he's got a big upside to make it on Raw and SmackDown as well as obviously the big impression he made on night one in NXT 2.0? Oh, unquestionably. I mean, he's somebody, the fact that he, he beat LA Knight in his first match on TV, uh, and they did a nice little thing backstage where uh, all these um, other up-and-comers were congratulating him, and it all felt rather, you know, quite heartfelt. I think he's a natural heel. It's weird to see him sort of presented as a baby face. I mean, look at that face. I mean, that's <laughs> a natural heel, isn't it? I'm just, you know, I'm sorry, you know, sorry, Bron, I probably wouldn't say it to your face. You look mean, you look tough. No, he, so, I mean, I thought he, he came across well. The audience reacted to him very favorably. Um, and it, and it's a real sort of credit to him as well that he's not coming out there with the Steiner name. You know, we'd say, obviously, they could have brought Scott in. I mean, you know, that would have been a meeting, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to make an appearance at ringside with his nephew. You know, that meeting between him and Triple H, that just would have been gold, wouldn't oh, it? Man? Oh yeah, yeah, that would be great. I still remember when we did the tour with Scott Steiner, that we um, we were we were doing the tour, and it was all going very well, and then the the bit that I remember the most was when Steiner was coming out, I said, do you want to put the, the headdress on? And he puts the headdress on, and I thought he was going to walk it on stage and take it off and just sit in his shades. But he sat in the thing for the full 90 minutes. He's telling all these stories about China and bad stuff in this chain link fence and he's just he, an absolute nut job but anyway um enough about him uh, do you but do you think going forward with nxt 2.0 do you think it's in, at risk of alienating the sort of nxt fans that liked the way that it was before or do you think that over time people will come to accept the changes i mean i mean if you read i read some comments online and that's you know can be quite misleading because it's a very vocal minority and I've got to say, probably about 70% of what I read um, was favorable, encouraging. It was people mostly complimentary. They said, well, I don't like this, and I don't like that. And But I mean, you people do adjust. I mean, remember when WWF became WWE in May 2002? That was just the weirdest thing ever. I mean, I remember we received a lot of letters in at Power Slam. You know, I don't like this. And they came up with that, like, campaign the rebranding exercise wasn't there like a thing of someone in a car and the car steamed up and it had the wwe logo kenny i think that's right isn't it yeah yeah they did a bunch of vignettes where it was get the f out and the, the f part it. of whatever it would be would go would be set on fire or whatever and get the f yeah. that was quite a clever campaign to be fair to give them that it was but a lot of people were resistant to the change didn't like it they thought well you know at some point we're just we're going to go back to it's going to go back to WWF. This is just going to be a passing phase. They'll reach an agreement, mm -hmm. and they'll be allowed to use the WWF name again. I think the NXT transition is going to be a, a lot smoother, a lot easier for people to digest. I mean, I like the arena. It, it was bold. Uh, it was bright. It looked um, more inviting. That sort of dark arena that they created, the Capital Wrestling Center. I understand why they did what they did. And I think that did work well during the pandemic. I mean, obviously, we still kind of got the pandemic on, but the crowds are back now. Uh, it was really good to see fans there. Um, the audience were really into most of what um, NXT presented that night. Um, yeah, it just felt really, you know, like a real breezy show. It moved fast. Nothing else stayed. It's welcome. I'll tell you, Kenny, even Mandy Rose had a good night in the ring. If you can believe that. Miracles do happen. My God. Mandy so Rose. She, yeah, she looked, she looked all right in the ring. She was in a uh, six-woman match. And I thought she looked decent. Um, I still don't like that running knee she does as a finisher. Because uh, quite often when she executes that, it, it doesn't look good. But it looked all right in this match. 
Um, and she's now got brown hair, so she's changed her image. I think sort of seeking to be, uh, you know, to, to distance herself from the glamorous image and try and be taken seriously as a wrestler. But I thought she did all right. Um, but I mean, yeah, overall, I mean, they had the Creed brothers on again. You saw them last week, didn't you, Kenny? Yeah, yeah. See last week? yeah. And they're, they're a fun act. I mean, they do a lot of moves that no one else does. Um, you can tell that they obviously were amateur wrestlers. They look really tough. That seems to be the drive, I think, of NXT now uh, and NXT uh, 2.0. And this is really what developmental should be. It should be about preparing people for the main roster. That should be its fundamental purpose. And I was thinking about this a lot after Adam Cole went to AEW. It's like, well, here's a guy. He was there like four years. He was North American champion. I think he was the longest, longest reigning NXT champion, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously pushed, um, did lots of different things, and then chose to go to AEW. And I think he probably made the right decision. You know, I'm not um, criticizing him for making that decision. I think that was the right move for him. But you look at all that time and effort that went into Adam Cole on NXT, and they basically made him a star for AEW, haven't they? Yeah, no, they they have. It's, it, but I mean, the I, I do. I I was going to say this earlier. I want to say it well. I remember the thing about the the old NXT fans that we were just talking about, and you know, are they going to you know get to grips with the new NXT? Tommaso Ciampa is the NXT champion again, so I think that that's exactly. enough. It, that's enough for you know. It's it's not all about you know new people and throwing the complete old formula away. It's about keeping stuff in the old formula that they still want to use and not use nails because we can't go through any more heartbreak with the call ups. We cannot go through any more heartbreak. And I think, just to finish off this discussion, Finn, I think you'll agree with me. You know, if Mandy Rose had a good night last night, maybe that tells us that the, the key to her success is leave Dana Brooke at home. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree with that one, Kenny. But I, just, I just think on NXT is that certainly there was a lot of emphasis on in-ring action. You know, so to me, that was what NXT was famous for. And that's what people tuned in for. And there was you know, less entertainment, but there was a lot of in-ring action, some bigger guys, but some of the old NXT guys as well. Uh, and as you said, Tommaso Ciampa became uh, the new NXT champion. I didn't predict that. I thought it was going to be Knight or Pete Dunn, and instead it was Ciampa. So, um, you know, they're still retaining elements of the old NXT, Kenny. 